Welcome back to the sound for more channel. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to auto fills, which allows you to generate drum fills really, really nice and unique. And it's an up from Gem All K. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. And additionally, if you would like to have an opportunity to own a copy of the app, then please do follow the instruction contained in the video description. Thank you again. Okay, as you can see, we are inside the AUM. Now we click on the plus sign, we create a MIDI channel. Now we click on the plus sign again, and we search for auto fills, which you start with for typing auto, and you can see auto fills here. Now, when you open it, it is what it looks like. Let's maximize the window. Now, this is uh, effectively another of uh, um, gem applications, which doesn't produce sound, it controls other application. Okay, it's like a sequencer, a generative sequencer. Okay, so therefore you need to have an audio, another audio source to control. So let's go close that, click on the plus sign and create an audio channel, and then click on the plus sign. And, the, and here is where uh, the fun begins because you need to choose uh, a a drum machine or a drum application. So let's search for Hammerhead. But of course, it could be Digistick, it could be any other app that you might have already installed on your device. Now, you need to connect the two because Autofills generates MIDI events. So you need to send those events from this app to, in this case, Hammerhead. So we click here on the left hand side of Hammerhead. We select MIDI input because we want to connect to an input. In this case, we select Autofills. Okay, you see the tick here. Okay, so let's open up now um, Hammerhead and um, let's. Uh, um, create, first of all, a bit of a pattern. So we decrease a bit the volume, okay? We have a sequencer inside Hammerhead. So we select kick here, okay? And uh, that's fine for that kick is selecting. And we say it needs to play on these steps, like so. Now, before I continue, let me disable. So I click and move to the left auto field, so it's not running. So I have only Hammerhead running. So let's click play. So you should hear now that kick drum on these steps. We go to snare and we select snares on these steps as well. Okay, perfect. Now we have a simple uh, drum loop. Let's reactivate now all the fields and let's maximize it. So first of all, as any other app from Jamal K, at the bottom left here, you have a pattern selection, so you can create new patterns, you can add them, and then if you click and hold, you can copy, and if you're more than one pattern, then and you've copied, you can paste, and you can delete as well a pattern. As always, on the bottom right, you have access to settings here. You can decide this is a message for changing patterns, the MIDI input channel that uh, the application responds to. But importantly now you can choose a template because you can um, go by templates of drum machine which are software machine like in this case and um, I'm going to see if I can find the hammerhead and there it is but please notice that at the bottom you also have a hardware as well um, drum machine which you can connect as well and that's really really great that those mappings have already been done for you you have um, a style control for your knob vertical or horizontal and vertical rotary standard in um, in the apps from a general k you can rate uh, the app which i recommend and provide feedback and you have the version at the bottom click down when you're finished you have a number of steps here in the kit view you have also a duration view which gives you some parameter this is different than the uh, usual application from gem then you have a velocity um screen which gives you for each step the uh, choice of velocity and then the same for notes and the same for the channel the important one of course is the kit because it allows you to establish as you can see here the probability and percentage of this particular kick in this case uh, to to be generated for the fill. Here you can add and remove steps. Okay, you can define the number of steps there. 
And then um, on duration, here you can say wait before you create a fill. You can say wait a number a bit, which you can increase or decrease here. Or bars. So in this case, let's say every two bars. Then you can say how long is the fill, the drum fill. It can be one bit in this case or one bar. I select the bar, so it will be one bar. And then you can also ask it to wait after the fill for a number of bits or a number of bars, which you can specify here. You can block any incoming MIDI messages if you route a sequencer through effectively uh, autofills and then autofills controlling um, your drum app or your hardware uh, drum. And then you can randomize the fills every single time. You, so you can enable that or no. You have a screen for velocity. As I said, you can establish the velocity for each of the notes. And then you can customize as well which note correspond to which part of the drum. So you can, of course, if you have a custom drum app or hardware, you can create your own specific note or map to your specific note, which is absolutely um, unique. But of course, if you use the template, you don't need to do that. Uh, channel and then this is great because if you have more than one um, drum app uh, and you're using the same template you can set each drum app to respond to different channels and therefore you can have a specific drum responding drum part to respond to a, a specific channel and then for that channel like uh, here in AUM you can establish a, a, some effect so effectively is the equivalent of here duplicating this having this one responding on channel one, this one responding on channel two, and uh, having two different effects here, because that is what you want to achieve, and then control each, each of the two. Of course, if you establish connectivity, like in this case, if you establish connectivity again, like so, and of course, you need to set uh, the channel, you would say, no, then I respond these only to two, okay? And then you would say here, um, remove the filter, and responding only to channel number one. So in this case, you have Hammerhead here responding on channel number one only, Hammerhead here responding only on channel two, only both connected to these instance of auto fields. And then here you can say the kick needs to be uh, sent out on channel number one, the snare, you can change it to channel uh, two and so on and so forth. So you can customize it, okay, which is really great. But now for the purpose of this initial tutorial, let's remove this channel, okay. And um, we leave this to respond to channel number one. It doesn't matter because the output is, is in channel one. So that is okay. Now, let me just play straight away. And so you can um, have a feel. What will happen is that um, uh, I'm ahead. We'll play this rhythm, which you, you just, uh, uh, the drum beat, which we have uh, created, simple kick and snare uh, bit. And then uh, after two bars here, because we said two, the fields will start, which will be generated by auto fields and will last for one bar. Okay, and then it will repeat. Okay, so please note here at the top and um, the number of bars as they are progressing. So, first, second, repeat the same. first, second bar, fail. So you can see that uh, also you have a, a red representation around the different steps. It shows it shows you, showing you, of course, the uh, the steps being played. As I said, you can change the probability. So you can say I want to have more close hi hat. Okay, you can click here generate at the bottom to regenerate it, and then of course back to the beginning start. Now you can change um, duration setting, which we have seen, but you can change also the velocity. So let's say we want close high hat, really high in volume. Maybe let's reduce the snare a little bit um, and let's try again. So you can have great fun, and I have to say, is no, um, at least in my case, I'm not natural in terms of the uh, 
program fills for drums. So this is really useful. As I said, you can change different notes. You can have different mappings, of course, which um, which which is great. And you can change the channel, as I mentioned. Now, here at the bottom, you have a number of parameters. And these parameters here changes only when you go to velocity. You have an addition one for variety, which introduces a variety in velocity in terms of percentage. But the other stays the same here as, they, as you move between the different screens. So the first one is density, so how many notes you have effectively so your complexity in terms of probability then you have number of voices this allows a um, number of drum parts to be played simultaneously up to three and that's quite interesting because of course that allows you to simulate like for example choke group as well then you can also change the rates um in terms of uh, the rates for uh, for the steps uh, of course, the moment is 16th, but you can make it slower or you can make it faster and then you have a button to generate. Okay, so let's click generate again and let's click play. So it's really a straightforward application as um, all the apps, to be honest, from uh, Gem. Um, but it works extremely, extremely well. Um, I cannot, let me show you here, we can randomize the field every time. So let me show you. Of course, you need to pay attention. Every two bars, it will generate a field. Okay, so I'm going to create another tutorial to explain a little bit more detail this function of blocking coming MIDI because I need to use another sequencer to give it justice. So I'm going to create another video shortly. I hope you enjoyed uh, the tutorial and demonstration. And as always, see you next time. Bye.